Hello guys, welcome back. So if you recall, in the last video, we kind of created a test for our login and sign up routes. What we're going to be doing in this part of this video is that we're going to be creating routes for our posts. So we've defined our post models here, title, content, the auto ID and the auto relationship. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating routes for each and every of our posts. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm just going to minimize my test. So everything I'm kind of doing is visible. So First, I'm going to create a file called um, routes.py, which is going to contain my route. So, from fast API, right, import API router. So, I'm going to need to create a route specific to just this post here. And I'm also going to say um, depends. So, I'm going to be needing different type of dependencies here. So I'm also going to need to um, import SQL Alchemy session. So I'll say from SQL Alchemy dot ORM import session. And I need to define my post router to be post underscore router equals API router. So this is going to allow us to define routes. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a route that allows the user to create a post. So I'm going to say at post underscore router dot post and I'm going to say um, post good so I think this fine let, let me begin that with a forward slash then I'm going to define my function for create post and I'll say def create underscore post so first I'm going to be expecting my post data so um, I can allow my post data to be a form, but one thing um, Python kind of allows us to do is it, it allows us to kind of like define a schema, just like we did here that we say from Python a pop base model, and we define a schema which is basically what allows us to define a way of inputs for our um, for our models. So I'm going to create a new schema here, and I'm going to say schema dot py, and I'll say from Python import um that would be base model and sorry okay yes from python sync import sorry base model and we're gonna say class um create sorry it seems it seems yes base model so create post and it's gonna be inheriting the base model and we want to define title of type string and we want to define the contents of the post to be type string now um i'm just going to rename this to be create update post because i, I want to use it a single schema to kind of create an update post so i'm going to save this here and go back to my route so i'll say from dot schema import create update post with that I can kind of like define my create update posts um, schema here, which is going to be a standard input for what I'm trying to do. And also, I want to define my database session. So I'm going to say DB session will be equals to um, depends, my dependency here. And I'm going to say get DB. So um, if I recall, get db should be under um, here my dependencies.py so i'm going to say um, from dot dependencies import get underscore db so it, i think i kind of spelled this wrongly so let, let's do that again so i'll say or I'm, i can just go from dependencies good import db it, it, it's not supposed to be dot dependencies because dependencies dot by is out here it's in the rule of our project folder so with that i can say depends on get db which is basically our database session and the next thing i kind of want to do is i want to ensure user is authenticated so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass in the current user and that will be user of type user and I can get the type of my user from um, from my users so what that means is I can I can decide to do from source dot okay call sorry from call dot users user dot models import user 
So we're basically taking this user that is defined here and passing it to this. And we're going to equate this to a dependency. That will be depends on get. I think that's going to be get current user because um, models.py. Yes. And we also have our route and schema.py here. So get current user is going to be something we're going to need to define. So by defining get current user, get current user we can basically assign a user to each post so how do we do this i'm going to need to create get current user now so to create get current user get current user is probably going to be a dependency for us so and how's that dependency supposed to look like that's what i'm going to do before we do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here to this user and i'm going to create what i call a br.py and this bureau is going to be my JWT bureau, which is what I'm going to use to authenticate request. So once I kind of declare my bearer, I then use it to um, for JWT authentication. So what am I trying to talk about? I'm basically going to explain what I'm trying to do by code. So I'm going to paste the code here now, which is basically my JWT bearer that I created. I'm inheriting it from HTTP bearer. So I got this code from testdriven.io. So there, there was a tutorial that as to how to perform JWT authentication. So you can decide to use, um, I could say from fastapi.security import, um, that should be OAuth, yes, OAuth to password request form, or I think password authorization, password request form to, you can use password to um, password request form to kind of authenticate your users and password copier but what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to give you um, an understanding of how to do everything from scratch which is why i'm kind of like following this approach so that was why i had to um, make use of test driven to kind of like get this code so what this code does is it's kind of inheriting this http exception from fast api http exception class and once this method is called we kind of check if the credentials is a brs scheme Otherwise, we return an error that says it's an invalid authentication scheme. And we also verify the JWT credentials, whether it's valid. And to do that, we define basically a function here that says def verify JWT, which kind of takes in the J JWT token and passes it here. So we need to define um, a function called JWT. So I'm not going to define it here. I'm going to define it in a new folder called utils.py yes so in my utils.py i'm going to create um the code jwt so i'm going to say def right i'm going to say def and i'll say decode jwt so with this i can kind of like create um a function that basically takes in a token sorry and a token is going to be a string and it's going to return um, a dictionary dict which is going to be my jwt token so i can say decoded underscore token uh, equals to um, i'm going to need to use jwt.decode and to do that i need to import jwt so jwt.decode i'm going to pass in the token and I'm also going to need to pass in my security to decode my JWT token. So if you recall from the last video in our um, in our user.py where we declare our models here, we can see that to encode our token, we made use of our secret key. So our secret key is basically going to be used in decoding this time. So I can just decide to copy this and say, I'm pasting it here and say um, from config, right? Import get settings. So uh i can i can also say um settings equals get underscore settings yes then i'll pass in an f string and i'll say settings dot secret underscore key so that that's kind of like a secure way to kind of like do this so or a more professional way and lastly i'm going to need to specify the algorithm i'm going to be using so um my algorithm is going to be um, a list 
so i'm gonna pass in the h uh, h250 hs250 h256 so you should try as much as possible to not make a mistake so in case you find out that you're having an error in this code you might need to check if you're passing in the right algorithm because in the last video we made a mistake in the spelling of our algorithm which resulted in an error so now i also want to check if this token is um if this token is basically um still valid so i'm going to say return decoded underscore token if decoded underscore token the expiry date so i, I defined very cool when i was creating um my my token as you can see i defined an expiration here so which is called exp and i'm going to be using that expiration here to check if my token is actually expired so if i check if my expiry time or my expiry date is basically greater than my current time so i need to import time good so if it's greater than time dot time um yes so we're going to be returning decoded token if my expiry date is greater than um equals to my time otherwise we're going to be returning none good so i, I guess this this a very um fine implementation that kind of works and like does the job so if i go back to my bureau now i would then need to import i would say from sorry from dot utils from dot utils import um that will be decoded decode jwt so with that i'm going to i can then make use of my jwt bureau to kind of like authenticate my request so this kind of checks if my payload is correct and it, it checks that if my payload is true it returns a valid token otherwise i'm gonna get an exception that says invalid token or expiry or expired token any other thing will kind of like give me invalid authorization code so that that's that now we're gonna go to our dependencies.py to define uh um to define our user dependencies so i'm gonna create um my function here and i'm gonna say dev um that will be dev get current underscore user right and it's gonna say token it's gonna be expecting a token on a string and it's gonna be it's gonna depend so let me import um fast api i'll say from fast api import depends right and it's going to be depending on my sorry it's going to depending on my bearer that i created so i'm going to say from src dot you sorry from call dot user dot um bearer import that will be jwt bearer so this is going to allow me to use this so i'm going to say depends on jwt pure so this is going to kind of like pass my token to it so i'm not necessarily um expecting a value but okay yes i should be expecting a value of type user so i can just say from core dot user dot models also import user so I'm, I'm having this here just to ensure things are clear. So I want to wrap this in a try and accept block because it's it's possible we might have error in, in this process. So the first thing I want to do is I want to decode this token over here. So uh, um, one way to go about this is I think, um, I think um, that, that will be, I'm going to go back to my bureau and all my utils i'm gonna borrow this line of code here so it, it, i'm kind of like having to repeat code right now so i'll say decoded jwt token equals this so i'm importing jwt um okay one of the reasons i'm having to do this again is because um i'm not i'm getting my token but i'm not necessarily um my jwt bearer is not necessarily um returning sorry my jwt bearer is not necessarily, my jwt bearer is not necessarily returning a value for me 
So it, it's only returning a, a boolean that kind of like tell, tells whether my value is true or false. So that's why I kind of like need to do this again. So I'm going to go back here and I will say user underscore ID is equals to JWT dot decode. Sorry, that, that's a mistake. So you don't underscore ID will be, um, I'll say payload or decoded jwt token dot get okay let's just rename this to payload so there is not necessarily any conflict as to what each each code does so i'm going to say payload dot get right and we're trying to get um, the user's subscribers id so which is basically the user id so once i kind of like get this from the token then i decide to initialize a database session and I'll say return query, right? Um, sorry. The, uh, yes, I should return this. So db.query, sorry, db.query. And I would need to pass in the user. And I will also then need to filter the user by ID. So I'm going to say where user.id equals equals, sorry equals equals user underscore id and i want to return the first occurrence of the user so th this is a good way to go about this so i seem to be getting an error here so I i'm just going to fix this by saying from config import get um settings and settings equals to get settings so that that's that that's fine so we're good now for the exception we're going to be returning so we can in in i think we should be able to return an exception so there is an exception that says accept pi j w t error right and accepts attributes attribute error so I, 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 i'm going to import this from vs code so i'll say from jwt import find jwt error sorry um good and i'm gonna say return we're gonna return an http exception this time around so it's gonna return an http exception that sets um status underscore code which is equals to an invalid uh, token also so we're kind of like doing a lot of things right now we're having different type of authentication processes everywhere so this is kind of like doing what this does also but this kind of works um in a different way we're trying to secure our entire routes with this so this depends on this and since i'm actually kind of like using a dependency i don't necessarily need to um I don't necessarily need to have defined all this, but it's because I'm not necessarily, I'm only returning a value for my JWT bear, which is why I, I have to do all this again. So that's on purpose. So to so then move forward, I'll then need to say um, from dependencies, get, um, I'll say get current user. So I'm then going to pass my get current user here. Yes. So that's kind of how we kind of like have an authenticated request so what happens is that when a request is made to this route here it ensures that there is a d um, database session that's ready and also they um there's also basically an authenticated user so i can then proceed to kind of like move forward in saying that i want to sorry i can then proceed forward to saying that i want to create my first post route so um let's create our first post route without wasting time so i'm going to say post is equals to post right title is equals to um post underscore data dot title and okay it seems like i've not imported this so i'm going to say from dot models import post sorry yes from dot models import post so I'm also going to need to define uh, my content, right? And that will be post underscore data dot content. Lastly, I'll need to define my auto ID, 
which is basically my user id and that's going to be auto id is going to be equals to my i i guess everyone gets that right or gets that right which is going to be user.id it's user.id because when we say we're depending on current user we can see that we're returning basically the first occurrence of the user so this returns a value for us and which is the value we're going to be using here if it, did, if it does not return a value for us to use this kind of like versus an exception that the user is not authenticated or something so now what we're going to do is we're going to then add the user and i can then say db.add post right and i'm going to say db.commit while that is done i can then return basically my data and i can say data equals to post underscore data so this is kind of like a first approach to kind of like ensure that everything we kind of have is is being done so now that we've created um our post let's kind of test things to be sure that everything is fine so i'm going to do python app.py and i'm going to show you basically all what we've done and with the plane so um i'm going to say local host that'll be 80 80 post slash docs and yes now um okay it seems something doesn't seem okay it seems that my post route has not been included that's because i need to import my post routes here so i'm gonna say from or dot post dot routes import post underscore router so i'm gonna say app dot include router sorry include router and that'll be post underscore router right and i'm gonna need to specify my prefix to be um forward slash um okay do i need to specify a prefix no i'm not specifying a prefix I think we're good. So I'm just going to remove this. So, uh, yes. So I'm going to reload this now. And as you can see, this, this kind of like reflects our change now. We can see that there's a route that says create post. So there's also auto rise here that's expecting a BR token for us. So let's get started. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to create a user and i'm going to call this user um stringer stringer and stringer okay there's a wrong email so stringer at, at email.com i'm going to execute this good so as we can see a user has been created called um stringer and stringer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my login route now and i'm going to try it out and stringer stringer and I'll execute this. As we can see, we have an access token that's been returned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this access token. So before I, I kind of like authorize my user here, let's just try and create a post without trying to authorize ourselves. So I'm gonna try this out and I'm gonna execute. So as you can see, we kind of have a 434 bidding that says not authenticated. So I just go here, I paste in this token here and I authorize and once I authorize, and I try to perform this operation again. We don't see that we kind of have response body to be 200 telling us that this was kind of like a successful operation. So this is kind of how you authenticate user routes in your fast API application. Now, um, there is more we can kind of like do. So let's get to that. So what I'm going to be doing next is sorry. What I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to create another endpoint that kind of allows us to, um, Another point that kind of allows us to list all posts that's been created. So I'm going to say at post underscore um, router, all right? And I'm going to call this post, and I'll say def list underscore post. So uh, this is going to be expecting a database session, all right? And it's going to depend on get db. So it depends get underscore db good so with this i'm going to then say user equals user equals um that's going to be depends on get current user so we don't necessarily kind of like have any use for this variable but 
we're just trying to ensure that this route is authenticated so let's query our database and to do that i can say post equals db dot query and it's going to be expecting uh, my post class and i'm going to say post dot all so i want to return basically all this so in, in situations where we kind of like want to paginate we can then decide to specify an offset here and i can start with zero but i'm not basically setting an offset right now so i just want to return all my posts maybe we could talk about pagination in some videos later on but let's just go with this so i'm going to say post equals db dot query post all so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to then return my data so i'm going to say return data um to be i'll say i'll return a list of posts so i'm going to say post um dot underscore underscore dates i'm returning a list of post for post in posts right good um okay there seems to be an error here uh, okay dot type error router dot call missing to require arguments hmm so okay i see so this should be a get at router dot post get so i guess that's fixed so i made a mistake here good so now let's ask add one more route that basically allows us to kind of like get a single post by id so i'm going to say add posts underscore router dot get and i'll need to pass in that will be my post and i'm also going to need to pass in what i call my post id so i'm going to say post underscore id and yes so i'm going to then define def view underscore post so the view underscore post is going to be expecting a post id um, which is going to be a type of string and it's also going to be expecting everything here which is a database section uh, and a user so i'm going to have this here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say post equals uh, i'll copy this also i'll say db.query.post right but what's going to make this the difference this time around is we're going to be using the filter where post dot sorry where post dot id is equals to um that will be post underscore id and we're going to say dot first that means we want to get the first occurrence of a post that is similar to this in id so we can then say if not post meaning if the post does not exist we can then raise probably an error maybe an http exception so I, I, I can say if not post i would say raise http um exception right and i want this to be a status code of i think sorry i want this to be a status code of um i think 44 is going to be fine and 44 definitely means not found so that's kind of like an appropriate error message to re re return. So I'm going to say post, I'm going to say post not found. So otherwise, we want to return the post. So I'm going to say return, right? I'm going to say data equals, uh, and then I'm going to return maybe a dict of the post. Sorry, post dot underscore underscore dict. Okay, I think we're good. So let's kind of like go back to our app and kind of restart things and just take things from the top again so uh let's see as we can see we have three endpoints now so i'm going to authorize okay um, let me take let me let me let me authenticate my user if i recall the name of my user was um stringer and the password of my user was also stringer and i'm going to execute this right now and yes, now that we have an access an access token, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to minimize, authorize, paste, and authorize. So with that, um, I can decide to create a new post and let's 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 try this out. Um, I, I'll call this um, a title of my second post, and I'm going to execute this. 
great as you can see my second post is uh, available right now so we've created two posts now one called string and one called my second post so if i try this out and execute this i should be expecting both of them to be here which is fine which is correct so now i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna i'm gonna close this that it works i want to get the post by id now so i'll try this out and i'll paste this and execute so yes as we can see we just got a post by id so that works so with that we've been able to kind of like create a post list a post and basically fetch a post by id while the user is kind of like authenticated now we're going to be doing one last thing which is going to be interesting so we want to edit the post and delete the post but this time around i want a situation where a user can only edit a post that belongs to them otherwise they're going to basically like get an error telling them they cannot do that and we also want a situation where they only delete the post that belongs to them so the users can basically like create posts they can list and basically like view posts from other users but this time around we want them to be able to only edit and delete posts that belongs to them so how do we go about this so the first thing i need to do is i can basically like create my um, route that allows me to kind of like edit and delete it's going to be straightforward but there's kind of like a better way to do this which is what we're going to be doing so i'm going to go to uh, my post here i'm then going to create what i call a dependency dot pi so what that dependency is going to do is it's going to basically try and help you get post for a particular users so um first i would say from fast api import um depends an http exception so and i'm also going to say from sql alchemy dot orm import session right yes oh sorry that that's a mistake so i'm then going to say from dependencies import get db okay get current user and also um uh, i want to get my db first so i'm going to say get db yes i think that works and also i want to say from src dot um, models sorry from core i'm used to um, naming my project folders as src so that that's where i keep having conflict conflicts i'm sorry about that so from core user dot models import user i'm going to say from core dot post dot models import um post yes wait so uh, i think we're good now let's kind of like create um this i'm going to say def get post for user so um, it's going to be expecting a post id of type string it's basically going to be expecting um i i could say it's going to be expecting um everything we have here so i'm going to take this i'm going to copy this paste it here good yes so what this is going to do is it's going to query our database for a post that belongs to the user which is kind of like similar to what we have here when we're trying to view posts so i can then decide to copy this and paste this here good okay there seems to be some problems with yes indentation so this kind of like fetches the first occurrence of a post so if the post does not exist it raises an exception of post not found so i, I can also then perform a check that says if post dot auto dot id right not equals to user dot id raise an exception so i'm going to copy this so this is going to be a full through exception that's basically forbidden so i, I, I you, we're going to return an error that says um you don't have permissions to modify this post so that's a better way to do this and otherwise in situations where everything kind of goes well we then return the post so i can decide to probably just be like i'm returning post here sorry good so th th that that works well so this is what we're going to use for a dependency with this we kind of like save multiple lines of code and we avoid having to repeat ourselves when we're trying to create 
um, the routes to edit and delete our users. So let's then create um, our router. So I will say at app, sorry, at post underscore router dot, um, I think that should be put. So I'm going to be expecting my, sorry, I'm going to be expecting forward slash post forward slash. Um, okay. Post underscore ID. So I, th I think this is what I'm going to be expecting. So I'm going to, I'm, go I'm just going to copy this here. I'm going to paste it, but I'm going to, this is going to be, um, delete. So let's define my post. So this is going to be def edit underscore post, and it's going to be expecting, sorry, def edit underscore post. It's going to be expecting post underscore ID, which is going to be a string. And it's going to be also be expecting my post data, which is going to be um, create updates post. And it's also going to be expecting um, posts from user, which is going to be post. It's going to be, um, it's going to be a, sorry, it's going to be a post, which is going to be a dependency. Depends on gets underscore posts. Sorry, get posts for user. And lastly, it's going to say DB session, right? It's going to be equals to depends on get DB. Good. So I'm going to have this here. Now we need to import get post from user. So I, I can then say from dot dependency import get post for user so with that i kind of have that set it out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to then go back then i'm going to say post sorry post or title it's going to be equals to post underscore data dot title and post underscore content it's going to be equals to post underscore data dot content. Yes. And once we are done with changing that, we're then going to comment our changes and we say db commit. So we can then try to just return the data we, we basically changed as our response. So I can say dev post underscore data. So th that, that kind of box. Sorry, this should be post or contents. Okay, so with this, I can kind of like say we're well, good, right? So we you kind of have like a better way to kind of like address this, which is what we have here. So that way we're not kind of like repeating having to check if a post basically belongs to our user right now. So th this is kind of like a neater way to go about this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be deleting my post. And if you can guess right, I'm just going to copy this just like I did before. Right. And I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to rename this to be delete. But this time around, we're not going to be expecting post underscore data. We're going to be expecting um, a post underscore ID and a post and a database section. So uh, we're not also going to be needing this. So what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be doing db dot delete and we're going to pass in our post which is basically being returned from our dependencies and once that's done we can then probably return a message um that says um that says this um post has been deleted sorry oh let me say uh, let me just say post deleted successfully yes post deleted successfully okay i guess that's correct okay we seem to be having an error somewhere what's that expected new line at the end of decorator uh, sorry good yes so i think with this we're kind of like good to go so let's then test if what we kind of like created is working. So first I'm going to go to uh, my sign up. I'm going to create a, a new user now. 
and the name of this user will be um, bstring with the password of bstring at gmail.com and I'm going to execute this so we have a user called bstring created now and we're going to then log in our user called bstring and let's see sorry bstring right and execute okay so bstring kind of has its own authentication token so okay um let's log out so we're going to authorize a new user now and once we have this closed we can then try to create a post oh it's in, it seems my new endpoints are not appearing okay I'd put dot delete at post underscore router. They're supposed to be here. Okay, let me just, I guess I did not refresh my browser. That's why it's not showing. So I'm just going to authorize again and paste and paste my token here and I authorize and I close. So I'm going to create a new post and I'm going to call this um, posts by B string, right? And I will execute this and it works. I'm also going to try and fetch a list of all posts and I'm going to execute this. And as you can see, we can see the post um, B string created. We can also see the post another user called stringer created. And as you can see, their auto ID is basically different. So I'm going to copy this post that's basically been created by B string. I'm going to copy the ID. I'm going to control C here and I'm going to go back now i want to view the post and i guess we can kind of like do that already so i'm going to execute and as you can see we can see the post by bstring now let's try and edit the post by bstring so i'm going to try this out and i'm going to say uh i'm going to have this to be bstring posts edit and i'll execute this as you can see, that works because we got a response of 200 and our data was returned to us back. So what if we kind of like want to delete what BString created? So before we delete that, I'm just going to add one more post. So and what the next post I'm going to add is going to be another post by BString. So I'm going to execute this. Yes, so that's been created already. So now i'm going to delete the post between created let's just go over our list of posts again and execute them so as you can see we have another post by bstring and post by bstring and basically uh, my second post and a post called string by different users so let's cut this down so we're going to delete the post by bstring now i'm going to say ctrl v execute Okay, internal server error. Something seems to be wrong. So it says, um, it says, um, code opposite model supplied is not, sorry, it says, um, uh, okay, it says, I'm trying to get what this does, what this error says. It says, SQL ORM or mapped instance class, SQL alchemy.declarative meta is not mapped. Was a class called a postdoc model supplied where an instance is required? Hmm. So it seems that there's a problem that seems to be happening right now. Sorry, I'm not supposed to define this here. Uh, I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go back to get underscore post for users. Uh, okay. Um, get post for users. Um, so if I recall, I'm trying to get the first occurrence of this post and it says post equals db dot query, post dot filter, post dot id equals the post dot id. I really kind of hate it when we kind of run into bugs in the middle of videos. It, it's not, it's not always fun. So I guess we're good. Then where does the error seems to be coming from? Sorry, let, let me go back to the error message and I think I should be able to get the file that triggered the error. Type state type object post as no attribute essay underscore instance underscore state. So 
something something seems to be wrong db dot delete post db dot commit hmm. message post deleted successfully okay um i'm just gonna try this again and um let me go back to my list of posts as we can see we have two a and um okay let's see okay internal server error so it seems that there's a problem somewhere and i can identify it okay let's just let's just wait and observe where this is coming from okay let's go back to this um get post current for user um okay we're supposed to return the type of post okay 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 it seems that we're kind of returning the instance itself not the actual post we got so i think that might be where the problem is so okay um let's kind of like retry that okay yeah post deleted successfully so the problem was that we're, we're, that, that was a, an error or mistake on my part I, I was returning an instance which was supposed to be an actual post so um sorry i wasn't returning an instance i was returning the post class itself so i was supposed to return um the result of the query but i, I was returning the post class itself which is what the problem was and it's i find it kind of interesting that the post actually got edited even though i actually um returned the post class b string post edit so let's let's kind of um let's kind of just uh, run this to let's run the list of posts to kind of like be sure that our post got deleted and yes our post got deleted so there's something i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna take um this post id created by another user so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna then minimize this i'm going to try to delete it so i'm going to just say control and control v and i'm going to execute as we can see we can then say cdo that you don't have permission to modify this post and why is that it's because we kind of like enforce the dependency that basically tells us that look if this post does not belong to this user called bstring if this is not the auto if the auto id of the person making the request is not equal to the auto id of the post of the id of the person making the request is not equal to the auto id of the post they do not have permission to kind of like edit the post so which was kind of what we did here so overall i hope we kind of like understood what's being said if you have any questions please drop your questions in the comment section i'm going to try as much as possible to actually respond to each and every comment right now and if you have any suggestions let me know if you feel something could have been done better let me know so Thank you for joining me today in the fourth part of this series. In the next part of the video, we're going to be testing our um, endpoints that we created. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you.